guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm excited for today's video because I get asked about this topic on a regular basis, and that is barcodes on Amazon. What barcodes do you need? Where can you go to buy them? How much do they cost? All of that will be explained in today's video. So if you've been having a little bit of a challenge figuring out the barcode situation on Amazon, this video will explain it all. So I got you covered. If you do like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And with that, we're gonna get right into it. I wanna start off by talking about UPCs or universal product codes. And a UPC is essentially a barcode that identifies a product no matter where the product came from, no matter where the product is located. A universal product code will tell you exactly what that product is. So when you are shopping in Walmart, you're shopping in Target, the Dollar Tree, Five Below, any place in the mall, the majority of those products are going to have a UPC that identifies what the product is. So if you want to try it out right now, you go in your bathroom, your kitchen, whatever, and you pick up a product, the chances are you are going to see a UPC somewhere on that product packaging because that is how the product is identified. For the purposes of selling on Amazon, all you need to do is purchase a UPC for each product that you are selling. And let me clarify that you only need one UPC for each type of product that you are selling. For example, if you are selling a blue cell phone case, you need to purchase one UPC for your blue cell phone cases. It does not matter how many units of that blue cell phone case that you sell, you only ever need one UPC. Now, later on, if you decide that you want to sell a red cell phone case, then you're going to need to purchase a new UPC for the red version. So you'll only need one UPC for the red one, and then you'll need one UPC for the blue one, regardless of how many in total that you sell. For the purposes of selling on Amazon, you're going to purchase a UPC from the website gs1.org. I do want to caution you that there are other third-party reselling websites where you can purchase a UPC for cheaper. Sometimes they'll sell them for a couple of dollars and it'll be very, very tempting to go ahead and buy the cheaper one, but I encourage you to follow Amazon's terms of service and in their terms of service, they say that you should be purchasing your UPC from gs1.org and GS1 is kind of the governing body of these barcodes. And so that is the legitimate official way that you should be doing it. I know it's a little bit more expensive, but it's a good investment because when you buy directly from GS1, you know that that UPC is available and you know that it's yours. You're not going to have issues down the road. If you purchase one that has been resold, it's very possible that someone else might have gotten that UPC as well. And that's going to create a whole big problem for you. And I want you guys to do this the right way so just trust me go ahead and pay a little bit extra for the gs1 version for your peace of mind and if you are taking this business seriously you want to go ahead and do it in the legitimate way that amazon will approve of so don't do any shortcuts and go to gs1 to purchase it when you purchase that upc from gs1 you're going to then be sent and you'll be able to download the barcode which is actually not the important part, but there is a series of numbers that corresponds with that barcode. That series of numbers that corresponds with the UPC barcode is called a GTIN. And that GTIN is a series of numbers, and those numbers are what you're going to need in order to make your Amazon seller account. Are we following? All right, are you guys following me? I know it can be a little bit confusing. So you're going to buy the UPC from gs1.org. You're going to copy the series of numbers that are generated from that UPC. And then you are going to insert those numbers into your Amazon seller listing. So when you go to create the listing, let's use that blue cell phone case, for example, you're going to be asked by Amazon for a product ID. And that product ID that you are going to be using is your GTIN number from your UPC that you purchased. So you insert that series of numbers and you are good to go and that's all you ever need that UPC for. So once you, you're done with that, you are good to move on to the next step. So the next barcode that I wanna talk about is one called the FNSKU 
or fulfillment network stock keeping unit. Essentially, that is just an Amazon specific barcode. So as products are moving through the Amazon fulfillment centers, they have to have a way to track these Amazon only products. And the way that they do that is with a barcode called an FNSKU. So when you are selling your products, what is important to know about the FNSKU is that it is generated by Amazon. So once your listing has been created, you can go into your Amazon seller account, go to that product and you can download these FNSKU or barcodes, Amazon barcodes that you're going to then have attached to all your products. I don't know if you all are Amazon shoppers. I shop on Amazon very regularly and you'll notice on many of the products that you order that there is an Amazon specific barcode that is on all of the packaging of these orders that are delivered. And I'm going to show you an example. Stay tuned in this video and I'll show you what these actually look like on Amazon products but know that an FNSKU is a requirement to have on your products if you are going to be sending your products into the Amazon fulfillment centers for them to do your fulfillment. In other words, if you are doing Amazon FBA or fulfillment by Amazon, you need to have an FNSKU attached to all of your products. There are some exceptions to this rule, but in general, if you are a beginner and you're starting out, you're going to need an FNSKU. And again, that is generated automatically by Amazon when you create your listing. After you download your FNSKU from your seller account, you're going to be able to send your FNSKU and normally it's in the form of a PDF file. You can just download that PDF and you can send it directly to your supplier and your supplier is going to be able to attach those barcodes to your product packaging and you'll be good to go. So your supplier is the one who's actually going to do the physical labor of putting the barcode stickers onto your products. You don't have to do a sticker. You can also have it printed onto your label. You can have it built into your product packaging. So there are different ways that you can include that FNSKU, but you just want to make sure that it is readable by a scanner. So it has to be clear. You have to make sure that it's not too, too tiny so that Amazon can actually scan it once it gets to the fulfillment centers. So the FNSKUs are going to go directly on every single unit of product that you are selling. With our blue cell phone case, if we were ordering 500 units of blue cell phone cases, that means that all 500 units will have to have an FNSKU attached to the packaging. Notice how I said they should have an FNSKU, but not a UPC. Remember, we only use the UPC for the Amazon listing, but on the physical products themselves, we're going to have our FNSKUs attached. And last but not least, I want to touch on ASINs or Amazon Standard Identification Numbers. This is another product code, product identifier that Amazon uses. But the difference between this and an FNSKU is that the ASIN is used for the listing itself. So we bought the UPC to create the Amazon listing. We then had the FNSKUs attached to our physical products, and now the ASIN is going to appear on our Amazon listing. So if you go on Amazon right now and you search up any product and you go to the product information, you're going to see ASIN and it's going to have a series of numbers on the ASIN. And what is important about the ASIN is that if you have to call Amazon and talk to them about your seller account or something has gone wrong with your product and you need a resolution, they're going to ask you for the ASIN. So that is how they're going to figure out what the product is and they're going to be able to go into their systems and kind of figure out what you're talking about. The ASIN is not something that you need to attach anywhere to your products. The ASIN is really only ever used if someone from Amazon is asking you what your product is and they're trying to help you figure something out. Most likely that's where that is going to come up. So the ASIN is automatically generated from Amazon as well as the FNSKU and then the UPC is purchased from GS1. So I hope all of that makes sense. I know that there are lots of different acronyms, um, but I wanted you to just be aware of what they are and where they go. So what I wanna do next is just show you examples of what these items look like or what the barcodes might look like if you're looking at an Amazon product. I shop on Amazon all the time, like I said. So I brought a couple of examples and this one here is heatless curling type of thing, a curling kit. And 
on this one, all there is is a UPC. So there's not an Amazon barcode on this one. And that is because they are exempt. They were able to have their brand registered and they were able to get exempt from having to do the FNSKUs. Remember I said that there's an exception. This is what the exception is. So I just wanted to show it to you. Don't stress out about getting the exception right now. You should just do the FNSKU because most of you will not be brand registered right off of the bat that's something that you will do a little bit later on so i wanted to just kind of show you in case you go into any of your amazon products and you're like wait a minute mine doesn't have that this is what a upc looks like just a generic barcode with some numbers at the bottom so the next thing that i want to go ahead and show you here is this book that I ordered and the reason I'm showing you a book is because there are other product identifiers or product IDs aside from UPCs. So a UPC is one but another one would be an ISBN which is basically a UPC but for a book specifically. So if you were selling a book you would do an ISBN instead of a UPC and the ISBN can be found right here on the bottom. That is the ISBN. Last but not least, I've got this actual cell phone case, and this one has an FNSKU on it. So the vast majority of products that you order from Amazon are going to have an FNSKU, and this is what it looks like here. Normally, FNSKUs start with the number or the series X00 or B0. So normally, if those are the first couple of characters that you see, then you can tell that it is and FNSKU. And the other thing with FNSKUs too is that typically they will have the name of the item right on the barcode along with what condition it's in. So if it's new, it'll say new. And then sometimes what Amazon sellers will do is put the country of origin right on the barcode. So this one, for example, they put made in China directly within the barcode. You don't have to do that. You can put made in China elsewhere, but it is kind of nice to have it all conveniently placed onto the same barcode. You send that to your supplier and they can put them on all of your units. So here we go. So you all can just see what this FNSKU looks like. And you can see it starts with X00. You can see that it says new item. And then you can see that it says made in China. So that is what Amazon is using as an FNSKU in order to track this product and scan it into the fulfillment centers. So I hope if you've been having a little bit of difficulty kind of figuring out where the barcodes go and where you go to get them, that this video helped to explain and clarify all of that for you. I know that it can seem a little bit overwhelming at times when you have to learn all of these new things, but trust me, it is worth it to continue on. Just go ahead buy your UPC everything will be fine and you'll have your products up and running on Amazon in no time so again thank you for being here if you like the video I would love if you subscribed and I will catch you in the next one bye